I didn't get the chance to look at the rest of his body because I couldn't get past his face. The only thing I could see was his teeth. That's how I knew it was my son. I know what his teeth look like. I know every hair on his head. <clears throat> Nobody wants to see their kid look like that. Hello, and welcome back to Legal Descent. Those of us who work in the legal industry interact with people in some of the darkest moments of their lives. Whether it be a spouse realizing that a relationship is ending in divorce, an individual understanding for the first time that their freedom is truly at jeopardy, or a parent grieving the loss of a child and desperately seeking for answers. We here at Legal Descent aren't here to beat up on law enforcement or activists. We're not here to hate on cops or anyone for that matter. What we are here to do is to evaluate fairly and accurately what your constitutional rights are when interacting with law enforcement. We're here to point out and hold accountable the bad police officers and exonerate the ones who do their jobs correctly. Today, we evaluate the shooting of Drejan Reed by Indianapolis police officer DeJure Mercer. We'll go through segments of the video that Mr. Reed live streamed on Facebook during the encounter. We'll take a look at the security camera that captured the last moments of Mr. Reed's life. And we'll analyze the legal obligations of a grand jury and discuss what we believe happened on this tragic day that ended the life of a young man. We'll discuss when are officers legally allowed to use lethal force and what is the burden of proof for a grand jury to decide on if they should press charges or not. We must warn you that this video will contain graphic language and images and topics that are intended for a mature audience only. The Indy Star reported that the vehicle pursuit initiated when IMPD Deputy Chief Kendale Adams allegedly witnessed Mr. Reed driving recklessly and according to police Mr. Reed almost struck other motorists. Deputy Chief Adams was joined in the pursuit by Chief Randall Taylor. Shortly into the chase, Mr. Reed began live streaming the encounter on Facebook. Hey, 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 but well, look, 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 hey, if y'all want to bail me out, you feel me? I got about, I got about two bands, you feel me? <laughs> and then you feel me, whatever y'all put with this shit, you feel me? Oh, this is fun though. But like... Man, I just can't, I can't go back to jail, y'all. Y'all know, everybody know me, I do not like jail. So you feel me? <laughs> Bitch, you gotta do better if you go get, I'm not going to jail easy, baby, I'm my mama. I'm gonna give you no regret. Why I'm with them not getting head while I'm texting. I love you, mama, I'm so sorry I put you through this. I love you, though. How's we chasing the year goes to me? I speak chest of the year, go to me. Fox 59, baby, I, I love it here. I love it here. <laughs> now, you feel me? It's hella people right here in front of me, cuz. I'm gonna beat your motherfucking ass. Oh my god. I'm she ain't getting no gas, y'all. So. I'm gonna start shooting. I ain't gonna catch it. Yeah, I can't keep it all the come on the book. I know, G, like, what the fuck is going on in my life? Uh-oh, I almost lost him, y'all. I almost got rid of his ass. Damn, never is. <laughs> never mind. I thought I, I thought I had his ass. I thought I was doing good. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, did I lose his ass? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're not finna catch me. I'm go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to jail today. No, sir. You gotta catch me, baby! I'm not going to jail today! I'm not going to jail today! About 10 minutes into the chase, IMPD called off the officers due to the high speed of the pursuit and the likelihood of risk to property and life. It was at this time that Officer Mercer witnessed Mr. Reed park the car and he began pursuit on foot. And the following video was watched live by thousands on Facebook. Hey, 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 hey! I open to be on my fucking, um, what is this? What the, what the fuck is this? Is this Michigan? Come on. How the fuck? What street is this? I'm finna park this motherfucker to get the fuck out. Oh baby. Oh baby, what's this? Michigan and what? Michigan and what? Ace? I'm finna park this motherfucker at Ace. On 62nd in Michigan? Somebody come get my stupid ass. Please come get me. Please come get me. 
Please go get me. I'm on 62nd in Michigan. I just parked this motherfucker. I'm gone. Please go get me. Mr. Reed was dead, shot and killed by Officer Mercer. According to police, Officer Mercer utilized his stun gun on Mr. Reed, but it was ineffective. Mr. Reed had a weapon and allegedly fired twice at Officer Mercer, forcing Officer Mercer to shoot back and ultimately resulting in the loss of Mr. Reed's life. Here is the security cam footage as displayed by the Indiana State Police later on. As he gets out, you're going to see him reach down on his waist. It's Officer Mercer pulling in. Running after Mr. Reed. Stop firing! Please stop me! With radio traffic. We've interposed the radio traffic from Officer Mercer over this. Popular YouTuber Donut Operator created a video that shows frame by frame video that suggests you can see the firearm in Mr. Reed's person. Take a look. So there's two examples right there of that same gun with the orange slide. Here's another one. Here's how he carries it. Notice that he carries it pointing to the left. He has a left handed draw. Same gun without a doubt. Sean Reed without a doubt. It's on his Facebook. Here's the header photo on Sean Reed's Facebook. Glock orange slide. Here's Sean Reed in a Facebook live stream holding the same gun. I'm not going to show the complete live stream. I'm going to show him bailing, and then I want to point out some important parts on here. I'm on 62nd in Michigan. I just parked this motherfucker. I'm gone. Please go get me. All right, we're running. Just He just bailed out of the car. He's taken off running away from police right now. I think the phone's in his pocket at this point. He pulls it back out here in a second. Very important stuff. You guys missed it, man. Very important part right there. Let me show you one more picture. Here's another picture of Sean Reed holding his gun. I want you to notice something right there on the back of it. Look at that honeycomb pattern with the little silver triangle on the back, right? Let me show you guys what you missed real quick. I had to go through this a few times. Frame by frame on YouTube. Crappy quality video. Look at that frame right there. This is the rear side of the gun. This is that little silver triangle, and this is the honeycomb, orangish, goldish uh, slide. Without a doubt, he had a gun on him and he had it in his left hand draw like he normally carries it. All right, so now that we have at least some of the facts, what's the law? When can an officer use lethal force? Any conversation of this magnitude begins with the Fourth Amendment to the Constitution safeguard from unreasonable seizure. There is absolutely no greater seizure of liberty than to take one's life. The United States Supreme Court held in Tennessee versus Garner that a Tennessee statute that allowed officers to shoot all felony suspects to prevent their escape was constitutionally unreasonable. Thank goodness for that ruling. However, officers are allowed to use deadly force if the suspect threatens the officer with a weapon or there is probable cause to believe that he has committed a crime involving the infliction or threatened infliction of some serious physical harm. Deadly force may be used if necessary to prevent escape 
and if, where feasible, some warning has been given. Further, Indiana law provides in Indiana Code 35-41-3-3B that a law enforcement officer is justified in using reasonable force if the officer reasonably believes that the force is necessary to effect a lawful arrest. However, an officer is justified in using deadly force only if the officer has probable cause to believe that the deadly force is necessary to prevent the commission of a forcible felony or to effect an arrest of a person who the officer has probable cause to believe poses a threat of serious bodily injury to the officer or a third person, and has given a warning, if feasible, to the person against whom the deadly force is to be used. Obviously, Officer Mercer did not give a warning. However, it didn't really seem feasible in this situation. If Mr. Reed truly had a gun, and he fired at Officer Mercer, then yes, Officer Mercer had the legal justification to fire back. The issue with this case is that we don't know for sure if Mr. Reed truly had a gun and if he fired at Officer Mercer, which is why this evidence was all brought before a grand jury just a few months ago. What is a grand jury and what purpose does it serve? A grand jury is called into play when the prosecutor wants to evaluate if there's enough evidence to even charge an individual of a crime. There's no defense attorney, only the prosecutor, the witnesses, and a six-person jury. The prosecutor presents all of the evidence they have in order to convict, and the grand jury then decides if that's enough for the prosecutor to bring forth charges or not. The rules of evidence are significantly relaxed and allow the prosecutor to bring in way more evidence than normally allowed in a jury trial. Basically, it's set up for the prosecutor to win. Further, to convict an individual at a jury trial, the jury must be convinced beyond a reasonable doubt that the individual is guilty of the crime alleged. Whereas, in a grand jury, they only need to find probable cause to force an indictment. Probable cause is a much lower burden than beyond a reasonable doubt. Despite this low standard, Special Prosecutor Rosemarie Curry was unable to get the grand jury to indict, and Officer Mercer was never charged. It is perfectly reasonable based on the evidence to believe that Mr. Reed had a firearm and that he would use that weapon in his encounter with police based on some of the statements he made during his live stream. It is also perfectly reasonable to want to make sure that that is what actually happened and that this was not a mindless killing of yet another young African-American male at the hands of the police. It's hard to evaluate these types of cases. It's clear that our society is divided and bitterness and mistrust run rampant throughout our community. While we firmly believe that everyone, police included, are innocent until proven guilty, it is difficult to see these types of situations occur throughout our country. Officers and citizens alike should be demanding that law enforcement are equipped with body cams and police use those body cams for everyone's protection. If Officer Mercer had been wearing one, there would be absolutely zero debate on whether Mr. Reed was armed and shooting at Officer Mercer or not. The last comment we have to make is on the following statement made by Officer Stephen Scott. This is disgusting and repulsive behavior and evidence as to why there is such a disconnect between law enforcement and the community they have sworn to serve. A tragedy just occurred. A young man who was a brother and a son had his life taken in a violent manner. This should never be joked about. What do you think? Do you believe the grand jury got it right? Do you think there was probable cause that Officer Mercer illegally used lethal force? Or was he justified in his actions? Let us know in the comments below. We have a lot more content planned and there will be some hard hitting videos coming soon. Make sure to subscribe and we'll see you next time right here on Legal Descent.